Okay, because we're gonna try and stabilize this here. What's happening? Nothing. Smelling. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were fixing something on the table. If I were to bend down, just as you're doing now, I would need help getting up. <laughs> um, I said, this is a torsion. Now, it, it doesn't make sense unless you look at the bones. I'm going to try and stabilize this with my fingers here. Can you help stabilize it? No, no, no. I, I, I can do it. Torsion? You see why that's a torsion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to stabilize it, but, but if I, if this is the torsion on this axis. Mm -hmm. Now, rotation is going to be in the same direction. Yeah. So this is the torsion, and that's why your hands are going purely like this. This is a real magic act doing this part here. Because the frame of magnet is not going that way, it's actually up here. So this is a right torsion, this is a left torsion. A torsion has happened at this axis. Now, okay, that's it. I got all of them separately. So, flexion, extension, right torsion, left torsion, right side bending. This is why your fingers are opening up. Okay, right rotation. That's why it's going down. Okay, um, and it's not sitting this way. It's actually, you know, this is how the frame of magnum is going down to Alfred. So left side bending. If you look at these as segments, like, like the vert, you know, spinal column, like this, okay, it's left side bending. Rotation, left rotation. Um, shear, a right lateral shear is going to be this, both turning in the same direction. Both, if they're both turning in the same direction, that's how we. This is a shearing action. This type of thing. If we both, if we turn in opposite directions, what do we get? If we turn in opposite directions, we get side bending. If we turn them both in the same direction, we get a right shear or a left shear. If we turn them in in the same directions, this way we get an inferior shear or a superior shear. So as I said, the, those arrows, just understand the arrows are only trying to describe an axis going through here in rotation. But our, our feeling with our fingers is going to be, this is inferior shear. It's going to be what the, your hinky is doing. Inferior shear, superior shear. So one way to treat this, diagnosis and treatment at the same time, is while you're on the sphenoid, what I did with Lily is I did two things. One is to just take her through those ranges of motion. Flexion, you know. Flexion, extension, right torsion. I forget which it was now, but one she really didn't want to do, and the exact opposite she really did want to do. And that's how it will be. If she is in, if she is in a right torsion, or I think she was in a left torsion, because it didn't want to do right. So if she's this way, and I try and make her go this way, she really, really doesn't want to do that. And she really, really, this position, she's already inclined toward it. And the other ones all feel off, but not they don't feel as right as this one or as wrong as that one. So I go flexion, extension, right torsion, left torsion, right side bending rotation, left side bending rotation, right shear, left shear, inferior, superior. Just think the range of motion. And you can hold it the way you want to hold it. What I did was, let me do the treatment now, is from, I'm using my thumbs. This is what I did. Wobbling and then bringing them together. I'll make it big. I'm going right, left, right, left. Trying to loosen that joint and then bring my thumbs down to my pinky. That's compression. I learned this as compression. We should go, I'll never be here. Somebody hold that. There we go. As I learned, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my I'm going to put compression into the joint and then decompression out. What I found works easier for me is just pressure right, left, right, left as I put some compression into the joint and then decompression. Works really nice. And I did ended up doing it twice in there. I didn't feel like I got what I wanted doing it once. So I took her through a range of motion and then compression. 
decompression. And you saw how much time it took me. You know, I spent about a minute, and I went back and I did it again. For any of the disorder? You could do it for anything. Okay. So it doesn't require you to be smart. To diagnose. You don't have to diagnose correctly. You still doing the same. If you don't do the diagnosis correctly, they will spontaneously catch fire and die. Okay? And what I want you to realize, Paul, Peter, I'm sorry, what I want you to realize is this. I want you to know that about 99.9% .9 of the CST world, osteopathic cranial world, cannot do these diagnoses. They cannot. They're going to look at you and lie and say they can. If you, and if you're one of the 0.01% who can do it, you're going to catch them in their lie. Okay? And it'll be really easy if you if you're part of the 001 percent who knows how to do it. Then maybe it's 0.02 percent. The reality is, is without trying to overcomplicate our professions, is if you get some motion in there, the body really can restore itself. I really do believe in human wellness. It does, you don't have to be so smart. What you do have to be is sensitive. Okay, because to talk about these, it requires that your hands are in the right place requires that I know where uh, the greater wing of the sphenoid is. Because doing this down and pushing in the middle of the zygomatic arch, I don't expect to get that result. So if I place my hands correctly and I just do some gross motions correctly, that may help his headache. Because it only takes a little bit of twist, a little bit of pain for you to feel a lot of discomfort. So find your hand placement, find your landmarks. We're gonna, um, we're gonna do this with rhythm also. Okay, but a lot of this is just mobility just nudging things in the correct direction. What is, what is the correct direction that it should go in? It should just be free to move.